Hi friends, nowadays in most of the electronics projects we use microcontrollers like Arduino, ESP32, ESP8266 as their prices have slashed down considerably and even their coding is open source and free. Most of these microcontrollers do not come with soldered header pins and we need to solder them ourselves as per our end use. During soldering, if these pins are not properly spaced and vertically aligned with the modules, we cannot use them with breadboard or PCB. It's really difficult to desolder and rectify them. Sometimes, during the rectification process, modules get damaged and we are left with no other choice but to throw them in trash. In this video, we will discuss an easy procedure to solder different type of header pins with the microcontrollers. Even novice can solder header pins like a pro following the procedure. We will solder male header pins with this VMOS D1 mini module based on ESP8266 chipset as we want to use it with PCB. Three different type of headers comes with this module. We will discuss how to solder each type of headers. With this module, two sets of female headers and one set of male headers are provided. One female set has long pins and other set has small pins. Male set has normal pins. We will take help of breadboard to solder these headers so that the module and the headers are properly spaced and aligned at right angles. As we are using breadboard, we don't need a soldering third hand. Now let's discuss how to solder different type of headers on a module. Initially, we will discuss how to solder male headers. For this, we will insert the small pins of male headers on both sides of the module one by one. Now let's hold both the headers and insert headers longer pins on the breadboard rails. This way, the long pins will get inserted at suitable rails as per the distance between two lines of holes on the module. Now let's ensure that the long pins are fully inserted in the breadboard. Here we can see that there is a gap between the header and breadboard. So let's press it lightly to fully insert the pins. Once there is no gap between headers and breadboard, we can solder small pins with the module. Right now, we are not soldering the small pins since after soldering, we will not be able to demonstrate the process of soldering female headers. So before soldering the male headers, Let's discuss how to solder female headers. For this, let's remove only the module from the male headers and leave the male headers as it is on the breadboard. We will start with female headers with small pins. Let's insert the pins of female headers in the module. Now let's insert the female side of these headers on small pins of the male header. Now we can solder the female header pins with the module. Remember that we should solder the corner pins first and during the soldering we should gently press the module so that female headers are perpendicular to the module and also there is no gap between the headers and the module. Generally female headers with small pins are used when we want to put shield on the module or we want to use DuPont wires for connection during prototyping. Once small pin headers are soldered we cannot insert this module on a breadboard. If you want to insert a module with female headers on a breadboard or want to fix the module on another set of female headers, we should use female headers with long pins. Now let's discuss the process of soldering female headers with long pins. Let's insert the pins of the female headers in the module. Pins of this header are slightly bent, so let's tighten them. Now let's insert them in the module.
Once again, let's insert the female side of these headers on small pins of the male header. Now we can solder the long pins with the module, obviously with gently pressing the module. Remember that during soldering long pins with the module, care should be taken so that no solder is soldered on the pins except at the junction of pins and module. Otherwise, we will face problem in fixing the module on the breadboard or shields and we have to remove the extra solder on the pins. Now let's keep aside these female headers and once again fix the module on the small pins of the male headers. Let's switch on the soldering iron. Now let's apply adequate flux on the pins and module. We are using liquid flux. You can use any good flux. Good quality and sufficient quantity of flux should be used. Otherwise we might face problem during soldering and also our solder might end up in dry solder in future. We are using pointed conical pencil bit since the pins we are going to solder are closely placed. If we use normal bit, there are more chances of bridge formation during soldering. Let's clean the soldering tip by retinning. Let's put some solder on the tip and solder any one of the corner pins. Remember, during soldering, we should gently press the module with one hand so that there is no gap between the module and headers and also headers are at right angle with the module. Now let's solder the diagonally opposite pin. Here we can see that the solder is not melting and flowing properly. The indication for improper solder melt and flow is, when we remove the soldering iron, the solder will stick to the iron and will drag towards the iron and somewhat form this shape. Since we are using temperature controlled soldering iron, the problem cannot be with the temperature but may be due to inadequate quantity of flux. So let's apply more flux on the pins. Now the solder is flowing properly and is not sticking with the soldering tip. Soldering of this pin is over. Before proceeding further, let's ensure that the headers are at right angles with the module. In case if they are not at right angles, we should melt the solder and reset the angle. Since here the headers are at right angle with the module, we can proceed with soldering of rest two corner pins using the same procedure. Since we have soldered all four corner pins, we need not have to press the module during soldering. Now we can solder rest of the pins one by one. For good solder joint, initially we should place the soldering tip such that it touches both the pin and solder pad to preheat them properly. Next, we should touch the solder wire with soldering tip and pin and keep feeding the solder till sufficient quantity of solder melts. Then we should remove the soldering wire. 
but still soldering tip should be left as it is so that the solder melts properly flow and reach everywhere now we can slowly lift the soldering tip upwards this way solder will be formed in a conical shape around the pin a proper solder joint will be shiny in case our solder joint is not shiny we can reapply flux and resolder it Here we can see that there is a bridge formation due to excess quantity of solder. To remove the bridge, let's clean our soldering tip of any extra solder. Now let's place the bit of the soldering iron in between both the pins and pull it upwards. We can see that the bridge is removed. In case if the bridge still persists, we can re-clean the tip and remove the bridge. Let's re-solder all the four corner pins as the soldering might not be proper since we have not preheated the pins and pads during previous soldering. Normal male headers are generally used when we want to use the modules on the breadboard or solder the module with PCB and use it. The blue mat used here is made of heat resistant silicon rubber. This mat is specially designed for soldering and desoldering with a soldering iron or hot air gun. During soldering, we should take care that we should not solder consecutive pins as this can result in excessive local temperature and may damage the module. The soldering iron station is digital temperature controlled with OLED display and its model is Mini TS100. Its power varies from 17 to 65 Watt and comes with 9 different bits and can cover any type of soldering. As per our past experience, this soldering iron is one of the best soldering station for electronics projects. We are making a detailed video about this soldering station and will be uploading the same soon. We have purchased this soldering iron from Banggood. This is also available on Amazon, eBay but its price is lowest on Banggood. All pins are soldered. Let's examine all the pins thoroughly. In case of any issue, we can re-solder and rectify the same. We have purchased the items used here from Amazon or Banggood. You can view the details of the items using the link provided in the description. If you want to buy any of these items, Please use the link given in the video description. If you buy any product within 24 hours of clicking the link from Amazon and within 15 days from Banggood, we will get a small commission on your purchases. Rest assured, there will be no additional charges for you on purchases through these links. But this way, you can financially support our channel without spending anything. We can see that all the solders are conical in shape and are shining. We can also see that there is no gap between the module and the headers and the headers are at right angle with the module. Now we can use this module with the breadboard or can solder this on PCB and use. Using the same procedure, we can solder any type of headers with any module. Let's conclude this video here. If you found this video useful, please hit the thumbs up icon. Please also share this video in your social circle. It will encourage us to upload more videos. If you have not yet subscribed our channel, please do subscribe our channel A1 Help. Please also click on bell icon to get notifications of our forthcoming videos. For any query or suggestion, please leave a message in the comment box. 
Let's meet again in next video. Thanks for watching till end. Bye.